So good morning, colleagues in Argentina. Buenos dias de Tokyo, Japón. I'm Masayuki Fujita from the University of Tokyo. It is a great honor and a pleasure for me to have this opportunity at the AADCA20 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. First of all, let me express my sincere thanks to the AADCA20 committee members for their amazing work, especially to Professor Ernan Haimovic for his invitation. Thank you very much. I would like to congratulate all of you on having this successful AADCA20. Today, I'm going to talk about a passivity-based control in robotics with networks, vision, and human. So to, to begin with, uh, let me introduce a father of passivity-based control in robotics. His name is Professor Suguru Arimoto. He was a professor at the University of Tokyo. He published his pioneering work in the ASME Journal of Dynamic Systems, Measurements and Control in 1981. It was nearly 40 years ago. This book, uh, published in 2006, celebrated his 70th birthday and contains a lot of recent developments in passivity-based control in robotics. According to Arimoto's work, the key property of skew symmetry is the key enabler for the passivity-based control of this Lagrangian systems. This condition is equivalent to passivity from input torque to output velocity of the Lagrangian dynamics. Skew symmetry of m dot of q minus 2c of q and q dot implies passivity and that this equation holds for any vector r. This is the key in the passivity-based control. Arimoto's focus seems to be in the passivity-based control of nonlinear mechanical systems, namely of industrial manipulators. However, his true goal and curiosity was a motor control in the brain with the body. As is well known, motor area in our brain and cerebellum control our arms, fingers, and so on, smoothly and dexterously. He showed strong interest in investigating this mechanism from a control theoretic viewpoint. My talk today tries to extend Arimoto's idea from just motor control to visual motor control. Visual motor means from eyes to retina, primary visual cortex, fifth visual cortex, primary motor area, cerebellum, and to arm and body. A colleague of mine says, this is from pixels to talk problem. 
do you think is there any passivity related theory on this problem now let us consider passivity based control with vision let us consider predator prey situation with two birds. In other words, it is a pursued evasion situation. This is a predator bird that wants to eat. This is a prey bird that does not want to be eaten. Both birds are flying and moving, of course. The predator uses its vision system to recognize and perceive the prey's motion. Here, we are interested in relative rigid body motion between the predator and the prey. Although the vision system provides high dimensional data, we would use low dimensional visual feature representations of the rigid body motion. On the image plane that mimics the retina and the visual cortex, we can get the visual features as in this figure. This is a predator bird, and this is a prey bird. We assume both can be modeled as a rigid body motion. Hence, we can establish the relative rigid body motion between them. The predator bird will use its eyes to get low dimensional feature representations of the play bird motion. Please note that this situation occurs in the real physical world. Now we can duplicate them in our brain or computer with their simple mathematical models as in this figure. By applying the pseudo inverse of the so called image Jacobian matrix, we can recover 3D information from 2D information on the image plane. At this point, interestingly enough, we can find passivity property. The details will be explained later. Since it is passive, we can successfully close the loop with stability. Then we can get an estimated 3D relative rigid body motion information, Z bar, here. It should be noted that this block diagram is the same with the state observer structure in modern control theory. So we will call this mechanism as visual motion observer. In this video clip, each colored ball represents visual feature attached on the 3D rigid body. The visual motion observer provides us with the estimated 3D motion of the rigid body. Now we are ready to combine passivity based control and estimation. Professor Ali Moto has developed passivity based control. Then we succeeded to develop passivity based estimation with fission. Since the feedback interconnection of two passive systems should remain passive and stable. Hence, we can combine these two passivity based methods naturally.
this video shows an experimental result of the visual servoing system. A camera is attached on the end effector part of the 2D direct drive manipulator and keep watching the moving target. A combined passivity-based method achieves the visual tracking system for the moving object. This research won the 2008 IEEE Transactions on Control Systems Technology Outstanding Paper Award. From now on, let me explain the mathematical aspects of the passivity-based control introduced in the previous slides. A rigid body motion is composed of the position and the orientation. P denotes the three-dimensional position vector, and R denotes the three by three rotational matrix. Then the homogeneous representation Z can be written in this way with a four by four matrix. Here, the rotational matrix R is a member of SO of three, the special orthogonal matrix with the dimension three. With the homogeneous representation Z, the body velocity can be written as G dot is equal to G times V sub B wedge. The definition of wedge is here. Each translational motion and rotational motion can be written in this way. First, let us focus on the translational motion only. If there is no rotation, that is, if the rotational matrix R is equal to the identity matrix I, then the rigid body motion becomes a simple single integrator. For a single integrator, we can define a storage function in this way. Psi is equal to 1 over 2 p square. Then, from a simple mathematical manipulation, it is easy to say that the translational motion is passive. Next, let us consider a rotational motion. For the rotational motion, we can define the stretch function phi other in this way. Phi is equal to one over two times the Frobenius norm of I minus R square. Please note that if there is no rotation, the rotational matrix becomes the identity matrix. Hence, this function phi is a measure of the rotation. By taking a time derivative of this storage function along the trajectory of the rigid body rotational motion, then we can find an interesting skew symmetry here. Since a symmetric matrix and a skew symmetric matrix is orthogonal each other, its trace is equal to zero. Hence, from this skew symmetry, we can say that the rotational motion is also passive. Now, let us combine the previous two results. For the rigid body motion with translation and rotation, we can define the stretch function S of Z other in this way. S is equal to Psi of P plus Phi of R, just as the sum of the previous two stretch 
functions. Then by taking the time derivative, it is again easy to show that the digit body becomes passive. This is the key for our analysis. Please recall that we have been considering the pursuit evasion, that is, the relative motion between the predator and the prey. So we are interested in the relative rigid body motion between the target, that is, the prey, and the camera, that is, on the predator. Let us define the three coordinates, the world frame here, the target frame here, and the camera frame here. Then, based on a simple manipulation, we can describe the relative rigid body motion between the target and the camera as in this equation. Here, G sub CO from camera to target object means the relative rigid body motion. P sub CO denotes the relative position and R sub CO denotes the relative rotation between the camera and the target object. Then we can naturally define the corresponding storage function as in this way. Again, by taking, by taking the time derivative, we can show that the relative rigid body motion between the camera and the target object is passive. As we have discussed, the relative rigid body motion between the camera and the target object is passive. Here, the camera eye block is actually the perspective projection of the features on the image plane. Hence, the image features F sub i, i.e. the number of the features, can be written with this nonlinear equation. Please note that the perspective projection is just a static transformation. Then we can show that the perspective projection transformation should preserve passivity between V and F. Let us put the duplications of the above parts in parallel in below as in this figure. The lower portions are the models of the relative rigid body motion in the camera in the computer system just as the observer in control theory. Since the parallel connection of the passive systems should remain passive, we can show that this overall system is still passive. If we further add the pseudo inverse of the image Jacobian matrix from the right hand side, since it is static, the system remains passive. Now let us close the loop of this passive system. As you know, based on the passivity theorem, the closed loop system becomes stable. Hence, Z bar, the estimate of the relative rigid body motion between the camera and the target object should com converge to the true 3G rigid body motion Z sub CO. This is the observer theory. Thus, we can construct the passivity-based 
visual motion observer. Since we now obtain the real-time 3D rigid body motion information, we can use it for its control, just like a observer-based control. As in the previous slide, one of the most important properties of passivity is its preservation in terms of interconnections, parallel connection, and feedback connection. Let us consider the standard feedback connection in this figure. And suppose that both of subsystems are passive, having the storage function S sub one and S sub two. Then by taking the time derivative of the sum of S sub one and S sub two, it turns out that the feedback connection in the figure can be shown to be again passive. The passivity preservation property is fully exploited in the book depicted in this slide. This book is published in 2015 from Springer. The title of the book is Passivity Based Control and Estimation in Networked Robotics. The authors include Professor Takeshi Hatanaka, Tokyo Institute of Technology, Professor Nikhil Chopra, the University of Maryland, and Professor Mark Spong, the University of Texas at Dallas. It has already achieved more than 15,000 chapter downloads up to now. In my talk today, uh, passivity-based control in robotics is highlighted from this book. I have already finished the vision part. Hence, let us move on to network part next, and then human part later on. Our next topic is network. Flocking of birds and school of fish are amazing in nature. In the first part of my talk, visio motor system was discussed from passivity viewpoint. In the second part, we will investigate passivity-based approach for this flocking behavior. Please have a look at the video clips for a moment. To analyze the behavior of dynamic system, as you know, stability theory is the basic concept. To analyze the behavior of a network system, in this case, synchronization theory is the key. Let us consider the network system depicted in this figure. Each node represents a nonlinear passive dynamic system. For simplicity, if we assume that the graph of the network is fixed, balanced, and strongly connected, then under the synchronization law with this equation, the network system achieves output synchronization. That is, each y sub i and y sub j should converge. 
the proof is based on the passivity property. Each passive system possesses a storage function, hence define the total storage function as the sum of individual energy. Then by taking time derivative, it is straightforward to derive the convergence. This output synchronization was first investigated by Professor Nikhil Chopra and Professor Mark Spong. Please note that passive system includes Lagrangian dynamics, such as a robot manipulator and a rigid body motion, such as a flying drone. Here, please recall that the rigid rotational motion can be written in this way, R dot is equal to R times omega B wedge. And the rigid rotational, rigid body rotational motion is passive owing to the skew symmetric property. As I explained, a symmetric matrix and the skew symmetric matrix is orthogonal each other. Hence, its trace becomes zero. That's why from this skew symmetry, we can say that the rotational motion is passive. Let us consider the rigid rotational motion. R dot is equal to R times omega B wedge with the storage function one over two phi of R, the rigid body rotational motion is passive. Here, remember the network of passive system. Then, under the synchronization law with this equation, that implies a relative orientation, the network system achieves attitude synchronization. Each R sub WI and R sub WJ should converge. Namely, all the agents in the network achieve the same orientation. The derivation is quite similar to the output synchronization under the same graph assumption. Output synchronization and attitude synchronization are quite analogous. Since both of them exploit the passivity property. At the 2018 IEEE Control Systems Society board lecture that was made during the IEEE conference on decision and control, Professor Max Spong mentioned the passivity based attitude synchronization that was explained in the previous slides. The video clip shows the experimental results conducted in Tokyo. Each node is a mobile inverted pendulum robot that can rotate. The reference rotation was given by the yellow points from the upper part of the video. You can see that the robots achieve the synchronization of the rotation. The synchronization in the attitude can be extended to the pose synchronization. Here, pose means not only the attitude orientation, but also the position. Namely, the synchronization of the entire homogeneous representation Z with the position P and the rotation R. The proof is quite similar. Remember that the rigid body motion Z dot is equal to Z times VB wedge, and this is passive. Hence, the synchronization can be claimed 
based on passivity. In this slide, we present a flocking algorithm in the three dimension as an extension of passivity-based synchronization. As is well known, there are three fundamental rules called Reynolds rule for achieving flocking, namely cohesion, alignment, and separation. Alignment can be done by attitude synchronization. So by combining cohesion, alignment, and separation, we can produce a flocking behavior based on passivity property as in this video. Recently, safe autonomy attracts a lot of attentions from control community. Actually, realizing safe autonomy, such as collision avoidance, obstacle avoidance, and so on, is very important, let's say, in robot control. It should be noted that a new theoretical tool, control barrier function is very powerful to use for this kind of purpose. For stability argument, it is well known that control the Apunov function plays a key role. Then for a safety issue, newly developed control barrier function becomes so important. For example, if we consider collision avoidance, then we can put this control barrier function CBF. The CBF H should be positive and further the time derivative of H should be also positive. This can be achieved by using real-time optimization technique. Normally, we use a quadratic pro programming, QP, to achieve both stability and safety. For detail, please refer to our recent paper in the IEEE Robotics and Automation Letters. In a recent issue of the IEEE Control Systems magazine, our group in Tokyo and the Georgia Tech group in Atlanta in the United States jointly conducted multi-robot experiment. We have achieved a successful coordination of robot teams over long, long distances from Georgia Tech to Tokyo Tech and back. It was an 11,000 kilometer multi-robot experiment. Since both multi-robot systems have been operated based on passivity-based control, those are robust and strong against time delay caused in the internet. For detail, please defer to our paper in the IEEE Control Systems magazine. Now, let us move on to the last part of my talk. It is about human. Human-controlled teleoperation system is very well, well known as we have discussed, each robot is controlled by the passivity-based approach. The network communication block is normally contains possible time delay, but by using the well-known scattering transformation technique, we can preserve passivity. 
finally, if the human part and the environment part is passive, then the overall feedback connection remains passive. This argument is deeply exploited in our book. We can readily extend this standard teleoperation technique to human swarm teleoperation. On one side, we have multi-robot systems that is controlled by the passivity-based approach. As we know now, robot swarm can be achieved by the passivity-based pose synchronization. On the other side, if we assume passive human operator from vision to motion, then the overall human swarm teleoperation should work well, even if there is a possible time delay in the internet. This result is reported in the ASME ASME Dynamic Systems and Control Magazine in 2017. Here we assume robotic agent as a single integrator that is known to be passive. Then we apply the PI proportional and integral type consensus synchronization for motion coordination. This is a generalization of the standard P proportional type consensus synchronization. Interestingly, we can also find another skew symmetry property here in the Brock diagram. The passivity of human operator from vision to finger motion is carefully evaluated experimentally in our 2015 IEEE CDC paper. We confirm that the human operator is passive. Then, by using a virtual reality items, we are successful to control the robot, robotic swarm system by human. This is a cyber physical and human systems research. Let me mention that the third IFAC cyber physical and human systems workshop will, will be held in this December. There is one thing that I would like to add that is visual pursuit control. This is to pursuit a moving object based on 3D motion estimation by visual motion observer. This is drawn and this is moving object v Vader. Apparently, if we want to achieve better pursuit, we need to learn the evader's behavior. To learn the target motion, the evader's motion, we currently make use of a machine learning technique, more precisely, Gaussian process. By integrating machine learning technique in the passivity-based control, autonomy in cognitive cyber-physical systems can be realized. This slide shows coverage control experiments. In the left-hand side, you see four robotic agents moving. These are the mobile inverted pendulum robots. The information exchange 
among those robots is fully uh, distributed manner. The four robots attempt to cover their own territories. This coverage control can be utilized in the mobile sensor network systems. If one agent is in failure, it is amazing that the remaining robots autonomously reconfigure. Just we did in synchronization, human coverage control is also possible. Human can manage swarm behavior as he or she wishes. In the right hand side, you see three flying drones. Each drone is equipped with the vision sensor. Three mobile vision sensors cooperatively cover the ground information. Please note that this coverage movement is persistent. By using the control barrier function, we can achieve the part persistent coverage control. Let me wrap up my today's talk. We begin with Professor Ari Moto's pioneering work. With a key skew symmetry in the Lagrangian dynamics, he showed a passivity based control of nonlinear mechanical systems. Following this work, we have extended it to the passivity based estimation. Owing to a skew symmetry in a rigid body motion in SE of 3, we have developed visual motion observer that enable us to estimate 3D motion and combine it with motion control. Then again, with a skew symmetry in a rigid body motion in SE of 3, we have developed attitude synchronization and pose synchronization. These results were validated with a couple of robotic experiments. Finally, human swarm teleoperation was considered. Just like a classical teleoperation system, we can manage the swarm behavior by human based on passivity concept. In my talk today, passivity-based control in robotics is highlighted from network, vision, and human perspectives. For technical details, I hope you would take a look at our book. My conclusion is that passivity plays a central role in control theory. Thank you for your kind attention. Gracias, gracias.